Righty ho. So I hope you've had a great day. Um, hello, I'm Jason Spencer, Business Development Director at ITV. And I am Kate Brooks, Series Producer of Coronation Street. And we are here today to talk to you about making great things happen. I think Kate and I have got something in common in that we're both in the ideas business. We're both selling. We are selling ideas all of the time. Now, a quick hands up. Who thinks they are in sales? Put your hand up if you think you're in sales. Not many people here. Well, listen, I've spent my entire career working either in sales roles on media owner side or at media agencies. And I would argue that I've always worked in sales, whether I'm selling to clients, selling to stakeholders internally, to creative agencies. And now at ITV, I'm selling to people like Kate. So the only difference is who we're selling to. So who do you sell to? So, so we kind of sell ideas to each other. So we sell them to the editorial team. We sell them to the network. We sell them to production. Um, but... Ultimately, we sell the ideas to you, which is the audience. So that's that's what we do. And we, we, you know, at ITV, we're selling ideas to pretty much everyone here in this room, apart from obviously the competitor media owners. But um, we think there are three takeaways about why this is important, why this matters. Well, selling ideas, I think, is at the heart of being great in this industry. It's about how we make great things happen on Coronation Street across Kate's area and my area. And we're going to give you kind of three takeaways from what we say over the next 10 minutes or so. These are what we think are really important in what both of us do. So it's about listening and learning. It's about not living in that kind of echo chamber of your own knowledge and understanding or those around you, but looking at your customers and audience. It's also about hooking and selling, recognizing that it's a competition for share of mind. How do you internally, externally, whether you're working with your brand or whether you're with your kind of stakeholders or partners, get that message through. And I think the most important thing is, whilst we all work in media, we also work in entertainment. So whatever brand you're working on, how do you entertain with a difference to stand out? So that's kind of how we do it. That's what we're hopefully going to give you. Over to you. So yeah, so obviously I work on Coronation Street, which is a lot of fun and probably a little bit different to what you guys do. Um, but I do think we all work in the same field. So how does this all relate to making great things on Corrie? Well, let's start with this really heavy ornament down there, also known as Mr. BAFTA. Um, and over the years, Corrie has won countless awards, um, from soap awards to BAFTAs, and most recently, Peter Ash picked up a great NTA award for best serial performance in a drama um, for his portrayal of Paul and charting his motor neuron disease. Obviously, awards, as really lovely as they are, and they are lovely, but they aren't the be-all and end-all for soaps. But what they are, especially the ones that are voted by you, the public, they are recognition that our product and our show is admired by its, by its consumers, the audience. Therefore, if we win awards, our product is deemed a bit of a success. To give you a bit more context and to um, potentially bore you with a bit of Corrie history, um, let's go back to the beginning of time, or in Corrie years, 64 years ago. I was only about seven then. <laughs> Um, for the best part of that's good. so for the best part of seven decades, Corrie has been the hot topic of conversation around many a household. And as the years have rolled by, it has stayed as relevant and innovative as it was all those years ago. So, who anyone here watches Corrie, Emma Dale, EastEnders, Brookside, Hollyoaks, Days of Our Lives? <laughs> I'm sure there's a few kind of hidden fans amongst everyone. Um, but what you and I have in common is the fact that we sell for a living. Whether it be ideas, stories, products, we're all in the business of selling our product to make the consumer happy. So what has kept Corrie the nation's favorite for such a long time? To put it simply, it's the art of selling. In 1960, Anthony McFay Simpson, AKA Tony Warren, sold his idea to Harry Elton, a commissioner at Granada. The idea, a show about a street out there. A little working class back street in Salford, filled with characters as relatable as the iconic cobbles themselves. It was groundbreaking in its simplicity and spoke to the heart of the nation. This was a show about people they knew and people like them. And this all started with a one-line sales pitch by the then just 24-year-old Tony Warren. So, Mr. Warren, with your spark of genius 64 years ago on a train to crew, what started as a commission for just 13, 13 scripts has now become this. Oh, 
Why can't the last day be a good day? I want us growing old together. Get your kit off, Archdeacon. Can't time stop still? Switch it off! I just want you not to be hurting like this. I hope you remember me. Billy, I am so sorry. So, as you can see, um, this story has such an impact on so many levels. It was a story about Paul getting MND and has won countless accolades and has helped raise awareness about MND while still keeping the story rooted in drama. But this was a hard sell. Who wants to watch a story? However important, that ostensibly appears lacking in hope and light? Well, as it happens a lot. In an average week, Cory reaches nearly 7 million viewers and has an impressive annual reach of 23.5 million. So as a producer, people think my job is to read scripts, schmooze with the cast, and maybe watch a bit of telly, which I kind of do quite a bit of. And that's one of the things, but for the most part, my job is about selling things. It's about selling ideas. And that's one of the most rewarding things about my job helping people turn ideas into a television show watched and loved by millions of people. This all starts at a story conference. A couple of days every month where around 40 writers and creatives sit around a big table and pitch ideas to the room, occasionally stopping for a bit of coffee and pastries and probably a bit of a gossip. They want to sell their idea so that their idea makes it onto the telly box six months down the line. As you can imagine, there's a lot of debate and um, arguments around that table as people battle it out to get their pitch through. And then the baton is passed and handed over to me, who, with the story team, produces a big old document of storylines to the network, selling the episodes we intend to make. Making the stories leap from the page to excite and engage the network so they can approve our hard-earned work and lofty ideas, and we can go about making telly. And then the selling doesn't stop. You know, we, we sell ideas to the actors, we sell the stories to the actors, we sell to the directors, to the design team, making sure that each and every script has all the ingredients to make an unmissable hour of telling. And once we've gone through the process and the episodes have been shot and they're all in the can, I have to make sure that the final product is an easy one to sell and that the episode is believable and relatable to the audience, as if we get it wrong, then the audience stop watching and our product will fail. And awards like Mr. Bafter over there, and recognition become a thing of the past. That is why every ounce of our work and day is about honing the ideas, honing the stories, so that our product and our curry, which we all love, does not fail. And that's why the MND storyline was such a huge success and such an important story to tell. This story was a tough watch at times, but with around six people per day being diagnosed with MND, which works out just under 2,200 a year, the Cory team knew that they had to get the story right and do the story justice. Working closely with the MND, A, to ensure that the story hit all the right notes, it didn't shy away from the reality of this terrible, terrible disease. It was imperative to make the story as believable as possible as it was broadcast into people's living rooms. Sorry, a bit of an awkward pause then, but I'll carry on regardless. Um, so that people could digest and talk about what was happening on screen, and as a result, help to raise awareness of MND. As a soap, we certainly can entertain with a difference, but we can also tell stories that really, really matter, stories like Paul's. But ultimately, we all have the same goal, to get people to invest in our product. We are all salespeople, but the question is, how do we capture and keep the consumers, the audience's imagination? by keeping our strategy bold, innovative, and appealing to what people want, by listening and learning, hooking and selling, and trying to entertain with a difference. So that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour of how we sell our stories and how we, how we make the show. I'll hand you back over to Jason. Well, how do I follow that? Well, with a trip to the Rovers, um, a quick show of hands. Put your hand up if you've been drinking more zero-alcohol beer in the last year than ever before. Anyone here? So there's a, a few hands um, there. So um, I, I have as well, uh, as you can tell. Um, but us Brits drink on average 10 pints of beer every single week. And if you did a league table around the world, we would be pretty much at the top uh, for one thing at least. Um, the idea of going to a pub and ordering a zero alcohol pint is just something that a lot of people do not think is a normal drink and some, a proper drink that you would order. That's the big challenge that faced Heineken. Heineken were looking at sparking a conversation around zero alcohol, 
challenging that stigma and getting people to overcome that prejudice and also drive sales. So that's where we stepped in. So as uh, Heineken were looking to roll out uh, zero on draft across the UK, we helped them get their beer into the pumps of the UK's biggest pub, the Rover's Return, visited by seven million people every single week. Now, shows like Corrie don't just reflect culture, but they change behavior too. And seeing really is believing. So this acted as a shortcut into popular culture. And it meant that you would have customers who would go in to the Rovers, who would normally order their favorite tipple, who shifted over to zero. And great things really did happen as a result of that. There was a 75% increase in the uh, in the viewers saying that they would be uh, looking to order zero alcohol and seeing that as a normal drink to order in a pub as a result of this. There was a 9% increase in sales of Heineken Zero, which we could attribute back to this. And this made a massive difference. And it came down to an idea that we sold not only to the client, but we also sold to Kate and her team. And it's through working together across our departments that we can make those great things happen. Now, product placement isn't new. And product placement, though, drives something, I think, quite unique, entertaining with a difference, as we've talked about. So. Alongside Heineken Zero, we've been doing this time and time again. We've done it with Visa Contactless when they were looking at driving up usage of contactless technology by putting it into Nick's Bistro and Dev's shop. We saw a 30% increase in usage as well as awareness around contactless technology, going back to when that was something that most people did not use. When the Rovers went up for sale, who should step in but Purple Bricks, giving it that really unique way to cement it into everyday life. When there was a florist opening on the street, it was Interflora who stepped in to, to, to open that shop uh, on, the, on the street. And most recently, this week, we've opened the first Sainsbury's Argos store on the street, right next to a Hayes Travel. All of these things make the show feel more authentic, more entertaining, more believable. And it's through working closely together that we're able to do that. So in summary, making great things happen for us in our world is about three things. It's about listening and learning, understanding the audience, but also listening and learning from each other. It's about hooking and selling, not just to each other, but recognizing what is it that that audience wants. And finally, it's recognizing that we're not in the media industry, we're in the entertainment industry. And let's not lose sight of that because it's about entertaining with a difference to stand out. That is how we make great things happen on Coronation Street. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.